These are all the questions that we will be looking at in this uh, video, but I'm going to split the questions up onto different slides. So here's 8.1 to 8.3, here's 8.4 to 8.5, and then here's 8.6. So we are told that the electrochemical cell is set up under standard conditions. Question 8.1 says component X completes the circuit. Okay, so this is a salt bridge, right? It says state one other function. So we know that a salt bridge has quite a couple different um, uh, functions. So uh, one of them, it completes the circuit. That's the one that they said. But I'll add it anyway, just for revision purposes for you. Completes the circuit. Um, separates the half cells, separates the two half cells. Step three, it maintains electrical neutrality. So it keeps everything electrically balanced, okay? So they gave us this one. So you can obviously choose between uh, this one or this one, because they just want you to state one other function. All right, the next one, define the term anode. So if you've watched any of my videos, you'll know that anode, an anode is always the place where oxidation happens. Whether we are looking at galvanic cells or electrolytic cells, it doesn't matter. And a cathode is the electrode where reduction takes place. So we can say here that it is the electrode where oxidation takes place. Okay, then it says uh, for the next question, identify the anode. So remember your anode is the place where oxidation happens. So what we need to do is we need to go grab table, our table. Now some of you use table 4A, some of you use table 4B. I use table 4B, as I've mentioned in other videos, because most schools in South Africa use table 4B. Okay, so I'm gonna quickly grab that. Now, if you've watched my videos before, you would know that, uh, sorry, that's meant to have a little arrow pointing up there. So this is a screenshot of table 4, uh, 4B. So what I do is I go, I look at this arrow. See, now this arrow here is on the right-hand side of the table. So I look at all of these things on the right. And what I do is I try to find the highest one out of these two. So I can see that there is hydrogen gas, which is H2, which is over there. And then there's magnesium. So that is there. So I take the highest one because I'm following the arrow, okay? So I'm following the arrow. So I keep magnesium. And then I know that the reaction is gonna go in this direction like that. Then what I do is I look on the left arrow. So I look on the left hand side and I find everything that I can see. So I can see some H plus over there. Why don't I choose this one? Well, because that's going H2S and S and we don't have any of that stuff. And then I also see that there's a Mg2+, which is over here. So then I look at the arrow. So I choose the one that's lower down. So that would be uh, the H+. And then I know that the reaction goes in that direction. If you haven't seen that before, then go watch my introduction videos on galvanic cells where I explain exactly how to use the table 4B. Okay, so that's the direction that everything's going to go. Now, we know that when it's written from left to right like that on a table, that is called reduction. And that is uh, the cathode. And then I look at this one over here, when it's written from right to left, that is where you have an anode, and it's also where oxidation takes place. So they said identify the anode, so it's the magnesium one, so we would say Mg. And you could also say magnesium if you want to, but just don't, please don't say Mg2+, that's not the electrode. All right, so I'm just gonna quickly highlight what we had earlier, so we had that, and we had that over there. Okay, now they say identify or write down the reduction half reaction. So that was this one. So we can just write that down. So 2H plus plus two electrons gives you um, H2. And I guess let's fill in the phases like that. Okay, so that's the reduction reaction over there. 8.4.2, the name or the formula of the reducing agent. So the reducing agent is the substance 
that gets oxidized. That gets oxidized. So that would be the magnesium. Not the Mg plus two, guys, not that one. It's always it's always uh, one of the starting ones. So either the H plus or the Mg. But the Mg is being oxidized, so it is called a reducing agent. So it's, Kevin, you're telling me that something that's oxidized is called a reducing agent? Yes, guys, remember in grade 11, that was the big confusion. The thing that gets oxidized is called a reducing agent, and the thing that gets reduced is called an oxidizing agent. So it's gonna be Mg. And you can also say uh, magnesium because they said uh, name or formula. Next one, calculate the initial voltmeter reading under standard conditions. Calculate the initial voltmeter reading under standard conditions. So we know that there is this formula to calculate the E cell, which is the cathode minus your anode. So we already looked at the two reactions that we have, which is this one, which we said was reduction. And we know that reduction is always taking place at a cathode. And then we have oxidation over here, which always takes place at an anode. So the cathode value then, or if we go E cell, the cathode value is zero. The anode value is negative 2.36. So if you had to go work this out, you end up getting a positive value of 2.36 volts. So some of you might be like, Kevin, how does that get us four marks? Well, you get one mark for that, you get one mark for that, you get one mark for that, and you get one mark for the formula. So what I'm going to do here quickly is I'm going to show you that this was the original, this is the original cell that we have, and now this is going to be the new one. So in the original, we had hydrogen, uh, so we went that way, and then we had magnesium, so that means we went that way. Now they say, and, and so what happened was that um, on this previous cell, we know that this is where the cathode was and this is where the anode was. So we know that the electrons always flow from the anode to the cathode in a galvanic cell, okay? So the electron flow was like that. Now, if we change that one for a copper, then all of a sudden, if you follow this arrow, the highest one is now going to be, because now we have hydrogen and we have copper. We don't have Mg anymore, okay? So the highest one is now going to be the hydrogen in this half cell when you connect it to this. And if you look at the lowest one, you've got this one and you've got that one. So the lowest one is now there. So now the, you've got this one going in that direction and you've got this one going in that direction. So can you see that in this scenario, the hydrogen was the one that was being reduced. But now the hydrogen is being the one that is oxidized and the copper is actually being the one that's reduced. So if you had to go back to this original uh, diagram and you had to switch this for copper and copper two plus, you would actually find that the electrons would go the other way because this would now be the cathode and this one would now be the anode. Okay, you might have to pause and just really think about this for yourself. So it says that the electron flow has changed. Now we, we understand that, but now it says fully explain why there is a change in direction of electron flow by referring to the relative strengths of the reducing agents involved. So let me first give you my own little explanation before we go put it into a nice three mark answer. Okay, so in this original one, this one over here, you know this one that we were busy with here? Let's look at that one first. So what we could see there was that magnesium, if you look at this arrow, has an increasing reducing ability. So it had a better reducing ability than hydrogen, okay? So we, in that one, you would have said that Mg um, has a better reducing ability than um, the H plus, sorry, not H plus, than the H2, and therefore uh, H plus is reduced, okay? Then in this one, you can say the same type of things. You could say um, hydrogen is a better reducing agent then uh, copper, and therefore Cu2 plus is reduced. 
This is the answer, guys. So I was just showing you how you would explain it for this one, but the actual answer for 8.6 is this one over here. All right, so um, because hydrogen is higher up on the right-hand side, that's the increasing reducing agent. So because it's higher up, it has a, the ability to cause this one to become reduced. All right, hope that makes sense.